Okay, today's communications robot are going to be Electric Robot and Electric Robot and Sun by Marx. This is 1950s and uh, why these are communication robots is has a buzzer for sending Morse code. It's, um, has a buzzer for sending Morse code. A very minty box and very minty robot, the gray one. Here's all the uh, functions. The uh, unusual thing about this robot, if you don't have the box, is you may want to try to put one battery in facing one way and one the other, like every other toy you've ever owned. In this case, this is in the 1950s. The two D-cell batteries go in the same direction. They're both wired in parallel. This entire robot runs on one and a half volts. And that means you could run it on one battery if you didn't have to. But if you end up, <laughs> because there weren't a lot of things before it, you end up putting one battery in one way and one the other, and you close the hatch, you're going to short both batteries out. There's going to be a meltdown. There's going to be an acid leak, and Lord knows. So you have to keep that in mind. But the other thing you have to keep in mind, just like with old cars from the 50s that had 6 volt batteries instead of 12, any corrosion, any rust, anything like that, toy's not going to work very well. In the case of this really old black one, it's got quite a bit of corrosion. I have had it cleaned in the past and working. It's not working today. That just means that with only one and a half volts to begin with, if you have even just one connection that's uh, a little corroded, things aren't going to work right. Gray one uh, is mostly working. Of course, the one feature that we want isn't working as it should. But uh, basically, once you have the batteries in the toy, you have a main switch here that you can turn on. And that would... See, even that was kind of intermittent. This one makes it go forward and backward. The main one on the back would turn the two eye lights on, like so. And the forward and backward. There he goes forward. There's his backward. You have the knobs for moving the arms. I mean, like you couldn't just reach over and move the arms, you know. You had to have a knob to move them. You've got a knob that was meant for raising and lowering this uh, antenna on the top of the head. And it uh, used a, a piece of rubber on the inside that rubbed against this uh, wire antenna. And of course the rubber gets very old, so you can't keep doing that. Here's the entire Morse code, in case you didn't know it or you wanted to practice your Morse code. And this is the button which is supposed to make the Morse code work. Now you notice when I push the button the eyes go out? That tells me that that tells me that the uh, buzzer is drawing current, so the switch is good because it's putting the eyes out. So one thing that you can do on, the, on these guys is you can take the drawer out and up inside in there I can actually see the buzzer. I'm going to reach in there with the only thing i got handy is a screwdriver. A chopstick would be perfect. Then I'm going to uh, just tap the buzzer if I can see it. I got to get the light in here just right so I can see what I'm what I'm doing. And there is the buzzer sound, and the eyes stay on. You see when it's working right. And if I push it again, it won't buzz without me uh, going in there. So the buzzer could use a, a little bit of an adjustment. There's two contact points to make a buzzer work. And let's turn a switch off. I think that's about all I wanted to say about them. It's uh, one of the earliest electric robots, and having a buzzer in our Morse code makes it a communication robot. <laughs>